Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Day and Gamers, and welcome. So it's Thursday, and that can only mean one thing. We've got a new update, and this update blows a lot of them out of the water. We've got pistons and blast doors added to the game, as well as another whole variety of awesome tweaks and features. Now let's talk about the pistons first. In front of me, we have the piston all the way retracted to its full extension. Now the things that you can do with this are absolutely amazing and the settings are really diverse. You can set it anything between this red one and the maximum of the blue one so you can be really precise and get it to the exact length that you want it for that door, that hangar or the elevator that you're going to have in your ship. Now if we come over here we have the blast door blocks that have actually came with this patch as well and they work in coercion you could say with the actual piston blocks. So we've got a number of different varieties, we've got corners, we've got inset corners, and we've got this sort of one that looks like a bit of a tank barrier. Now, I'm going to actually show you the real secret behind these and why they've been added in. If you can notice here, we actually have a gap between the actual blocks, and that means that it can free flow between the normal sort of ship blocks, and that's very important in creating a doorway, and that's why they've been named blast doors. So if we look around, we've got a whole variety of different sorts of things we can do with the blast doors, but let's actually have a look at this one first. Now this is actually a flat tile, and you could walk across it, you could do all sorts of things on it, but it actually hides a secret ship. So if we come over here, and we activate the ship ramp, we reverse that, we can actually see these doors are coming apart, opening up, and the ship lift is thrusting that ship into the actual air above us and it's going to come up nice and level with us and before this took absolutely ages of planning you had to add rotors and all different sorts of things to power it up but just look how smooth that actually is and we can simply hop on over get in our ship and fly away now there's hundreds and hundreds of more things we can do with these but i'm just going to show you a few more now this is what i like to call the um glass elevator a bit like charlie and the chocolate factory and if we press this button we close the door and we can actually lift this thing up now this is a little bit more dangerous but i'm just showing you the extremes of what you can actually do so you can create a very effective sort of lift to lift you maybe to a higher floor of a station or maybe you could use it to put you on a lower floor depending on where your pistons are going to be set up and how you're going to do it but it's just really interesting to actually see how this thing works so you're going to see we're still going up it's a little bit jittery but the only reason is that is because all the pistons are extending at once. So let's hop on out. You can actually see that all the pistons extending one after another down there. Just a really cool sort of concept. Now we've got a standard sort of blast door to head on through. You can actually hit the actual control panel on here. And we can open the large door. And you can see it works just the same as that little hanger down there. We've got the doors opening back, peeling really smoothly. And you can see how that gap allows for that effectiveness now let's talk about the piston on small ships what sort of things can you do with it now since it's available on small ships this is going to allow for a whole variety of different sort of creative solutions and first of all i want to show you the nozzle so i built this little nozzle so i can dock with other ships and extend it so as you can see i'm extending the arm actually outward and i could connect that up to another ship gather supplies resupply the ship and so on because the actual resources can be transferred through the actual pipe on the piston now over here we have two welders and i've got them on extendable arms so say for instance there was a, a small area that i wanted to get my welders into and i couldn't do it with the whole ship i can extend my arms out and weld into that area really nice really simple now you can get really complicated with these as well you can combine them with landing gears pistons and you can even combine the odd rotor to create something like this now this is a sort of landing gear system that I've been just messing around with. You can see the gears there. Now if you hit reverse there and hit reverse there, you can see the landing gears going up as well as also folding away. So the front one's folded completely up and that one has folded to the side as well as going up just a little bit. We can also reverse the process and you can see the landing gears have retracted down and we're all ready to put this thing back on the deck. So let's land that down could also use this for some sort of assault craft doors perhaps at the back of that ship as well now let's talk about the rotors now as you can see these rotors are not actually all the same level they've got a bit of variation between them now that's actually quite interesting because this allows us to do a lot of different things so we can see that this rotor now is actually flush 
with this block and we can extend that in and out with some simple adjustments to it. So if we hop onto here and we go and find our final rotor that is there, you can see how we have this rotor displacement level. So if we push this up to 20, the rotor will actually pop out of this shell. But at the moment it's having some difficulty. So I'm sure that will be hot fixed as soon as possible. Now let's continue on. We have one final thing to show you before we get on to more of the multiplayer based things that are going to improve the multiplayer sort of side of performance and excitement. Now if you're a fellow weapons creator like me, you're going to love this. Now the actual thrusters can be controlled manually so that means you can make manually firing rockets. So on the side here I've just got some basic rockets that I've sort of been constructing, been messing around with, not really finalised design and I've got a target over there. So I'm going to hop on him and I've done a manually power up the rockets so as we can see here I've got the power button and I can manually override the thrusters and power them up so you can see the thrusters on the side pods are actually thrusting away trying to escape from the ship but I've got them locked sturdy in place now all I have to do now is activate my landing gears and it'll allow me to fire these missiles at a target like so so as you can see rockets away We've hit the target, we've caused just a little bit of destruction. Just It's just really exciting to see something like that with the ability to actually fire and move them thrusters manually. The amount of weapons that are going to be created that way are extremely exciting. Anyway, let's move on. Another one of the new interesting features is with the battery. We've got a new setting, so if we access the actual box, you can actually see with the battery itself, we have this setting called semi-auto. And that basically allows us to charge the battery so when it's 100% it will reset itself and start depleting the battery using up the power and when it gets to zero it'll set itself back to recharge and charge itself all the way back up. Really interesting, really nice sort of saying that you can make your station a lot more self-sufficient. Another one of the new features is the ability to see if someone's actually hacking one of your objects, but the only way you can actually see is if you own an antenna attached to the item that's being hacked. So if the item begins to get hacked, and you're actually sitting around your base, you can actually see that the door is flashing away, indicating to me that someone is trying to break into my base. Now, that is an extremely useful feature, especially if you're away or you're on the bridge of your ship and now the door's flashing and I know that someone's trying to get in through that doorway itself and I can respond to it. Now, it keeps flashing until I actually interact with it or the player goes away and stops interacting or grinding at the door. Now, the final feature I actually want to show you today is the new features that have been added to factions. So, if we head into our factions and we look at the LSG Empire, we can actually see we've got two new features. We've got accept requests and accept everyone. Now you've got to read these carefully because accept requests actually accepts any other empire, any other nation, any other faction to allow them to actually propose peace with you. So if we tick that box, anyone out there can actually become peaceful with us. So the West Galaxy Trading Empire are now peaceful and we don't actually have to accept that request. It's just automatically approved. Now, if we move on to the other option, that's accept everyone. This allows anyone to actually join your empire, your nation, your faction. So you can see here, as soon as that box is ticked, new members can come and flow in without us having to approve them. Very interesting, very exciting. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. There's some really interesting features been added to this patch, and I can't wait to see what we're going to do with them.